Hey, welcome everybody. In this Bootstrap video, I will cover only the most important things that you need to know to get started. Bootstrap is a highly popular CSS framework that streamlines development by offering pre-designed components with optional JavaScript for interactivity alongside with templates and responsive grids. It empowers creators to rapidly build attractive and functional websites efficiently that are robust and feature rich. With customizable options and pre-built components, Bootstrap ensures design consistency and seamless performance across devices and screen sizes. Hey, welcome everybody. To get started, navigate to getbootstrap.com. I'm going to be using the latest version of Bootstrap, which as of today is version 5.3.1. If you scroll down a little bit, you will find the installation guide. From here, we have two options, install via a package manager or include via CDN. Now they both have pros and cons. For example, if you want to install it via the package manager, you get control over the version. You have offline availability, greater customization and security. On the other hand, if you want to use the CDN, it's easier to set up. You have caching, which uses less bandwidth. You have automatic update for better or worse. Then you have reduced hosting load and you have global availability, which makes it super fast. Now in this video, I'm actually going to be using both. And in the first part of the video, we're going to start with the CDN. Let's jump into Visual Studio Code or whatever code editor you have. And before we get started, I want to mention two extensions that can save us a little bit of time. And if I go under extensions from here, the first one will be the live server extension, which essentially creates a local server and listens on changes. So every time I make a change to my document, it will refresh the browser for me automatically. So I don't have to do it manually. You don't need this, but it's nice to have. The other extension that I want to mention is the Bootstrap 5 Quick snippets extension and the reason that this extension is good is because it can save you a lot of time. For example, they have a lot of useful snippets from here that you can literally start typing BS5, for example, alert, and then you can select whatever you like. For example, if you want to use the, the full alert, you can type this and it will add the required code for you instead of you going to the documentation, copying and pasting. It just saves you a little bit of time. You definitely don't need it, but it's nice to have. From here, I've created a brand new folder called Bootstrap. Let's create a file called index.html and let's start a local server by clicking go live. This is going to open the website in another browser under localhost, which is 127.0.0.1 and port of 5500. From here, we can start creating our HTML document and I'm going to go with HTML5 like so. Save it and let's put an H1. Hello. I'm going to zoom in just so you can see a little bit better. And now let's include Bootstrap. So if you go back to Bootstrap, Scroll down a little bit where we have the CDN. From here, we need to copy the CSS link. So I'm going to copy this and we need to insert this link inside the head element under title. So I'm going to paste this in here. And also let's toggle world wrap by going view and then it should be here world wrap or alt and z. Save this and now you should see that the font just changed. And this is because our style sheet is now working and we can start using Bootstrap just like this. But also if you wish to add any of the elements that need interaction from Bootstrap, for example, alert or client site form validation, you do need to add the JavaScript. So let's copy the JavaScript as well. And we can paste it here underneath the link like so. And we can just add the fur to this script, which means that this script will be executed once the page has finished loading. And we can save this. This shouldn't change anything, but now you should be able to add interactive elements from Bootstrap. Before we do anything, let's go to the doc super quickly and have a look around. Here on the left side is where you can have everything that you need. They do have a quick start guide and everything is nicely laid out. The only thing that I wanted to show you before we get started is the colors. Now there are a couple of default colors that we can use throughout all layout. And these are the colors here, the primary, secondary, success, danger, warning, info, light and dark. Obviously they can be overwritten or if you install Bootstrap locally, you can amend the SCSS variables and change them to whatever you like. Let's minimize everything. And the first thing that we're going to do is focus on the topography. So I'm going to scroll down and let's make a little bit of space inside here. To speed up the process, I'm going to copy and paste six headings. So these are the default headings. Obviously I am zoomed in quite a bit. That's why they look 
quite large, but these are the default headings and this is the default behavior. Now, one thing that I want to show you is that if I open this in another browser and if I inspect it, and let's toggle the device toolbar here so we can look around how the text is behaving. So if I scale down the browser, you will see that the topography is fairly small. And if I go up, you will see that it's actually fluid. So the topography is responsive as default. It doesn't make a huge difference, but it is responsive as default. Now for each heading, there is also a class that you can use. And for example, you can use the headings class names in order to modify the look of your headings. So for example, if I want to make this heading look like H2, I can just put H2. And now this is going to have the same size as H2. And we have the numbers from H1 to H6 available. So I can definitely make this H6. And this is going to look like H6, if that makes sense. We might have H1 for CO, but for the look and feel, it looks like H6, which is great. Just like that, when you need a heading to stand out, you can use another class name called display. I can change the class name to display. And then we have the numbers from one to six. So if I put one, this is going to be the largest one. And as you can see, this stands out from the rest a little bit more. And of course, you can change the font weight if you wish to. There are a lot of utility tools such as font, F for font and W for weight. And then you just put bold. Obviously, some of those things you'll probably discover once you use Bootstrap. I won't be able to cover absolutely everything, but these are the things that you can do. And as I said, you can change this to five or four, or whatever, and the size will change. All right, now let's move this down a little bit and let's have a look at some of the inline text elements. To speed up the process, I'm going to copy and paste them and explain them. So for example, I'm creating a paragraph here with the element mark. And if I save this, you will see that this highlights the text. So we're getting highlighted text. Just like that, we can use other elements such as delete, which is basically going to put a cross through line through the text. And that's pretty much it. Then we have S in here, which says that this line is no longer accurate. And it looks pretty much like the delete one. It just puts a line through the text. Then if we use ins, this will be addition to the document. It will just underline it. Then for underline, we can also use U, just like standard. You put U and then this will have underline text. We also have small, which is fine print. And as you can see, this is slightly smaller. Because I'm zoomed in, it doesn't make a huge difference, but it is slightly smaller. Then we have a bold text here, which you can wrap in strong. And as you can see, this just becomes bold. And the last one that I'm going to show you is the italicized text. And as you can see, we have text, which is italic. That's pretty much it. Now, the great thing about this is also that they're class names. So for example, if I wish to highlight the heading one, I can give it a class name of mark and save. And as you can see, this highlights the heading one. I can do the same for the heading two. I can do small. And now this will make the heading two small like so. So there are definitely utility classes like this that you can explore and attach them to pretty much anything that you need. All right, the last thing that I wanted to show you on the topography is that we can change the font colors if you wish to. For example, on the H1 here, I can do text and then primary. If I save this, this is going to bring the primary color, which comes from Bootstrap. And I'm going to show you super quickly as well here. One more time. These are the colors that we can use as the default. So you just attach primary, secondary success or whatever you wish to the text class name. And this will change it. For example, on this one, we can do text danger. And this should turn it into red, as you can see. And also, if you wish to change the background color, you can do BG dash primary. And that will change the background color like so. And you do have different backgrounds that you can use. For example, you can use a uh, background black like so, or background white. You just have to look into the documentation and look around. There is also transparent which you won't be able to see now, but it can be useful from time to time. All right, the next thing that we're going to look into is the layout. So if you go on the layout and then breakpoint here, you'll be able to see 
that we have different breakpoints that we can use on all layouts. For example, small, medium, large, extra large, and extra, extra large. Breakpoints can be used to control how the layout elements adapt to a particular viewport or device size. As you can see here, we have the dimensions and we have bare minimum styling, such as the SM, MD, LG, and these can be attached to pretty much anything which I'm going to show you in a second. And those dimensions represent a subset of common device sizes and viewport dimensions, which provides the user with great experience. Now let's jump back into the code editor and maybe we can just comment this out and I'm going to make some space. The first thing that I want to look into is containers. If we click on containers from here, you'll be able to see already how we can use the breakpoint. For example, we have a normal container here. And then if you wish to attach a breakpoint to it, you just put a dash in the breakpoint. That's pretty much it. And here on the right side, you can see how the container is actually behaving. So if we put container dash fluid, this is always going to be 100% on all screens. But if we put container dash XXL, it's going to be fluid for most screens, except the extra, extra large and so on. So let's have a look at how this behaves. So inside here, I'm going to create a container by doing dot container press enter and then inside here we can just type something and by the way i do want to mention that this can be attached to pretty much any html5 element you don't have to just use divs inside here we have a container and i am zoomed in quite a bit so you won't be able to see properly and also it's kind of hard to tell so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna so i'm gonna create a style sheet super quickly inside here of course i can link another style sheet inside here from or folder and what I'm going to do is put dot container. And then for the container, all I want to do is swap the background color to aqua. And then maybe we can give it a border of one pixel, dark blue, and then dashed. Just like so, it will be a little bit easier to see. Now on mobile screen, as you can see, the container takes the full weight of the browser. We do have some space on the left side and the right side. And this can be very useful so your content doesn't touch the sides. But of course, you can amend this if you wish to. Now, if I go to the desktop view here, you will see how the container is behaving after a certain size here. It no longer extends. And this is because I'm using the standard container, which is here. It goes 100% to small screens. And then after this, it changes the size based on the breakpoint. So if I go down, you should see how it changes the size, which is pretty cool. Now, of course, I can change this to fluid. And I'll have to add it here as well. And now if we go back to the browser, you'll see that this is always 100%. And this is pretty much how you're going to be using the breakpoint throughout Bootstrap. And I'm going to show you more examples right now. And just to mention containers are normally used to wrap sections of your website, or you can even wrap the entire website in a container. So it stays in the middle. Now we're going to look into the grid system. When I say grid system, I don't mean CSS grid. It's basically columns and rows, but they're very powerful because they use Flexbox. As a default, Bootstrap has a 12 column grid system, but that doesn't mean that you can't use more than 12 columns. And I'm going to show you what I mean now. So to start with, we're going to look into the auto layout columns. So if you click on this, you will see how it works in here. They have examples, but let's jump into Visual Studio Code. Now inside here, inside our container, we can create another div with the class name of row. Inside row is normally where you would have your columns. So you would create a row and then you would create a column like so. And I can just put co and you'll see it. So this column, you might not be able to tell, but it takes the full width available. And what I'm going to do inside here, I'm also going to add row row and then each div inside the row to be highlighted so it's going to be hard to see just yet but if i duplicate this column one more time so all shift down save you'll see that these columns are taken equal width automatically so these are auto layout columns it doesn't really matter that the bootstrap grid system has 12 columns we can add as many as we want like so and they're just going to take the available space but look what happens when we add a couple of more. As you can see, when we don't have any available space, the auto layout columns just go underneath and they just stack like so. And then on the second line, 
they're taking the available space nicely and if i go to the big screen here you will see how they behave also so on big screen they fit nicely which is fine and then if we go down at some point they're gonna stack underneath here we go and that's how the auto columns behave which can be pretty useful now with that said sometimes you want to have equal width and in your layout you might end up doing something like this for example you might have a row with two columns that have equal width and then you can copy this row have another row with three columns and that would be absolutely fine as well and now if i go to the desktop view you will see how they behave everything behaves just as normal of course there are a lot of utility tags that you can use in order to align things for example the easiest one to tell you is the text dash center and this will align the text in the center and i can copy this for the second row as well and just like that we have everything in the center now let's have a look at setting up column width so from time to time you might want to have a column at a certain size this column here i want to have it as two so it takes two columns of the 12 column grid system and if i save this you will see that here we're taking two columns and then the second column which is auto column basically it takes the available space if i go on desktop you will see that obviously it's a lot larger like so and that's how it behaves and i can definitely change this to four for example and as you can see it becomes bigger five six and so on so you have 12 numbers here that you can mess around with but if i say if i put eight here you will see now we have only two available so this is taking the two available but let's say if i want this one to be four boom that will work because eight plus four is 12 and that will work but if i want to make this one a little bit bigger let's say six for example now we won't have the available space and this is going to break on another line and this is how the 12 column grid system works so in this case we can save six and six and they will stack next to each other on all screens now let's make those variable so what i mean by this is let's add a breakpoint so for example if we start from mobile first both of those are auto layout and they're taking equal width but let's say i want to change this on medium screens only i can do call dash md which is the medium breakpoint and then i can change the size for example four now look what happens if i go to the big screen here and if i extend it you will see that when we hit the breakpoint of medium screens at some point here this is only going to take four columns of the available 12 as you can see and then after this it's just going to continue but let's say we want to change it one more time so when we hit larger screens i'm going to do lg for large maybe we can take eight just so we can see the difference now if i go back to the desktop view you will see that we're getting fluid then on medium screens we are taking four and now on large screens at some point we are taking eight columns which is amazing so this is how you can mess around with the responsive web design and as long as you think mobile first it actually makes it really easy and that's it of course you can change this one as well uh, let's say on medium screens call medium this can be two and on call large this can be four and now let's have a look if i go here you will see how they behave at some point here this is four and this is two so we have a lot of available space in inside here now the reason i'm showing you this is because those rows are actually flexbox which means that we can align elements however we like so we can definitely justify those elements in the middle if we wish to for example we can do this here justify content center and if i go back to desktop you will see that these elements are now justified in the center and just like that we can also use a line to push them in the middle of the box if we wish to but at the moment i have no space around so i would have to put height on this pretty much in order to push them in the middle and one thing that i want to mention is that if you notice earlier for example if i put column medium of two this is going to follow from medium and up and it's always going to be two so if i go on the big screen here as you can see it doesn't matter how big the screen is this is always going to be two and that's pretty much it of course you can mix and match those things to 
uh, make your layout work. And the next thing that I want to show you is row columns. For example, on this row here, we have three columns. But what you can do is you can put row dash calls and then set a specific number. For example, we have three columns in here, but I can set this row to explicitly have only two columns like so. And now, as you can see, we have two columns. Even though that I can add a few more, we only have two columns. The same way I can say three, we have three columns, which is pretty cool. And the last thing that I wanted to show you is that you can definitely nest rows into columns. So for example, I can copy this. It might not look pretty, but I can definitely nest it inside here. I can paste it and we have a column. And inside this column, we can split the column into two other columns like so. And that's pretty cool. For the alignment, as I said earlier, you can use justify or align, and then you can do content, center and start you can do content start center and around between evenly and so on for example on this one here we can say between and if i go on big screen you'll see that this column stays on the left side and this one stays on the right side so if you're familiar with flexbox this is pretty self-explanatory and you can do the same thing with alignment now, the other thing that you might end up using quite a lot is padding, margin and gutters. So padding is fairly easy to do. I'm going to remove this super quickly. And so we have a little bit more space. And for padding, basically you want to use P. That stands for padding. And then you have a couple of options. For example, padding top, padding right, padding left and padding bottom. And then you can put a number. So if I put padding top four, it pushes my row at the top and I can do the same thing of padding padding bottom of four and this will push the bottom now there are also ways of doing it on the x-axis and the y-axis and for this it will be padding y and then four and now if i remove this this will be exactly the same thing because it pushes the padding on the x-axis so top and bottom and i can do the same thing for the x which is left and right and as you can see we have four four now if you can see but we have a little bit of space in here the same thing goes for the margin instead of p you would use M for margin and now we have margin on the left side and the right side and if you wish to you can have margin Y like so or you can put margin top only and this will change so you just have to mess around a little bit to get used to it and that's pretty much it now for the rows exactly the same thing you can also use gutters and to use gutters you would put G and then for example GX and then 5 and this will push I'm not sure if you can see but if I go on desktop view, you will see that this pushes, let me zoom in a little bit. This pushes the columns here on the left side here. And this is because of the gutters. If I was to do gutters on the Y axis, you'll probably see that it changes here. And another thing that we can do is if you put gutters to the X axis and they're outside here, you can actually put overflow hidden on the container here if you wish to, which is another utility tool. And now, if you look at the document, you will see that the line doesn't uh, go outside. And the same thing goes for vertical getters. Instead of X, you just use Y and that's it. And for both, you will just remove the Y. You just have getters, dash and the number. And that will do it for both top and bottom like so. And that goes for the padding uh, margin as well. And of course, you can apply different breakpoints for different margins, getters, paddings and so on. By doing, for example, and for large screens, for example, we can do gutter, large screens, and then maybe five. And that should also make a change. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see now, but it will make a change on large, it should make a change on large screens. So if I remove this, I think it does make a change, but yeah, it's kind of hard to see, but you get the point of how to do the breakpoints. And the last thing that I wanted to show you here is that you can change the background colors to them. Of course, you can just go to a column and you can just do background of primary and that will change the color. I can do the same for the other column. So background danger and that will change the color as well. And we can do text, uh, I don't know, white, and then that would also change the text color as well. So these are utility tools that you can uh, find in the documentation and mess around with. In this section, we'll look at components super quickly 
and components are basically designed to help developers build consistent, responsive and visually appealing web applications without having to start from scratch. And we have a wide range of components that are commonly found in web interfaces. For example, let's pick button here. And if you look into the documentation, they have a lot of examples. Let's jump into Visual Studio Code and have a look at some of them. So I'm going to comment this out super quickly and create some buttons here. So we are starting blank. To create a button, you can start with a button and each button has a default class of BTN as the very minimum. This button is going to have the type of button and then we can just put button as the text. So this is a very basic button here. Now, if you wish to change the color of button, you do BTN primary. For example, obviously you can use the colors available. You can use, for example, secondary and so on. Now, those button classes can be used on pretty much anything that you need. For example, you might end up using it on links. So you do class BTN and then maybe BTN and then BTN primary. And then from here, you'd have the href because this is a link. I'm going to have it as empty link. We'll have the row for accessibility as button. And then inside here, you put your link like so. And just like that, we have a link that looks like a button. Obviously, it looks a lot better when it's zoomed out. The other thing that I wanted to show you is that buttons have different variations. For example, if I was to copy this, we can have it outlined. So I can put dash outlined and just like so. Oh, I think it's outlined. Yep, it's outlined instead. And then just like so, we can have outline buttons and I can put it as danger this one, for example. And as you can see, it changes the color. You can also put it as disabled. And as you can see, this looks disabled. And if I hover over it, you'll see that the cursor doesn't change and it looks like the button is disabled, which is pretty cool. You can also change the size of buttons. For example, you can do BTN dash large and now this will become a lot larger or you can change it to be small and it will become a lot smaller than the rest. Of course, you can put custom styling on each element if you wish to and that's it. All right, super quickly, just to show you another component, uh, let's look into model. Of course, I'm not going to be able to go through every single one, but this one uses JavaScript and that's why I wanted to show you something different. So what we can do from here, I can either use the bootstrap documentation and copy one that I like from here. They have pretty much everything that you need. So I can definitely copy this one here and paste it. Or you can use the extension that I showed you earlier. And for example, let's say that I put bootstrap dash model. And from here we have model toggle, default and so on. So I'm going to put the toggle one and this is going to bring all the code for us. If I save this, you'll see that we have open first model. And if I click on it, we have a working model. Now, one thing that I want to demonstrate is that if I was to remove the JavaScript from here, this will not work. So I'll save it, click on it. And as you can see, it does not work. So you do need the JavaScript to enable the interactivity. And if I go on big screen somewhere around here, and if I, let's remove this super quickly. And if I click on open face model button, you will see that it looks super nice. It has a really nice animation and it all works. Just like that, you can go through the components. For the most part, it's pretty much a copy and paste job. They have a lot of examples and that should save you a lot of time having to recreate some of them. And also, I don't want to mention that all of them are customizable. You can just apply any classes to them. Now, if you wish to apply custom classes to something, you can just create a normal class here. For example, custom button. And then I'm not really and then I'm not really sure what to do about this one, but let's say border of two pixel solid red, like so. And now I can add this class name to pretty much any element here. Let's say the, the first one here. And now you will see that we're applying a custom class name. And just like that, you can create your own custom class names or your own custom components and change the, with the CDN, one thing that you might want to do, for example, is to change the topography. So if I was to uncomment the topography super quickly, just so we have something on the screen here, one thing to change the topography is to override the bootstrap variables. So if I was to go on big screen, so if I was to go on the big screen here, and if I right click inspect, 
click on the HTML here and here on the right side and the styles, you should be able to see all of the available variables. Now you can actually use those to change stuff in your layout. For example, I can use this variable here. I can go back and instead of putting solid red, I can just use variable and then put the variable name and this will change it to orange. I'm not sure if you can see, but it changes to orange, which is great. So we can definitely use them. And just like that also, if you scroll down a little bit more, you might be able to see the Bootstrap font sans serif. This is what it uses at the moment. And we can override this. So if I copy this, and in order to override this, you would normally do something like this. So you do root, you put the variable name, and then you put the font that you want. So obviously sometimes you might want to download the font from a Google font or Adobe font and you write the name here. So I'll put Arial. And before I save it, let's have it here on the right side so we can see the difference. And now I'm going to save it. And as you can tell, it changes the font here super quickly. And if I put Poppins, it should change it also because I think that I have Poppins installed on my machine. That's why. And just like that, you can overwrite elements if you wish to. In this section, we're going to install Bootstrap locally using Vit. So navigate to getbootstrap.com and click on read the docs. From here, we have the Vit option here under get started. So click on that. And as you can see, we have some other options such as parcel, webpack, and so on. So there are multiple ways of installing Bootstrap locally. So I'm going to put this on the right side. And this process is going to be a lot more involved than using the CDN. So this is one of the downsides. If I scroll down a little bit from here, you will see the setup. Let's open PowerShell or Terminal on our desktop. So I'm going to do left shift, right click and open in Terminal. If you're using Mac or Linux, you can simply use the CD command to navigate to the folder that you wish to install your project in. And as of currently, I'm just using my desktop. So in this case, I'm going to grab the first code, which is going to create a project folder called my project, and it's going to CD to that project folder. So right click and press enter. This created the folder here on the top left corner, as you can see. And now we need to initialize a new NPM project. Right click, paste the code, and this will create a package.json file inside the folder. The next thing that we need to do is install vit. So copy this right click to paste it and press enter then we need to install bootstrap so i'm going to copy this right click press enter and we need to install the additional dependencies copy right click and enter from here we need to create our project structure now since i'm using powershell i might not be able to do this unless there is a way but it's a little bit more involved so I think that it would be easier to just open my project folder in Visual Studio Code and create those manually. If you're using Linux or Mac, you might be able to do this, but let's do them manually anyway. So since I'm CD to this project folder, I can just do code dot and this will open Visual Studio Code for me. Here on the left side, I have the project and now let's have a look at the project folder. So we need to create the folder source. From here, I'm going to create a new folder source. And inside this source folder, we need a JS folder. So JS. And we need one more, which is going to be SCSS. SCSS. And that's it. From here, we need to, inside the source folder, we need to create index.html file. Copy. And then let's do index.html. From here, we need to create main.js inside the JS folder. Like so. And then in the SCSS folder, we need to create style. SCSS. So here we go. Drop done. And the last one that we need to create is vit.config.js. And that's outside, I believe. Yeah, so that's going to be outside the source folder. Here we go. And that's it. So this is how our project should look like. Okay, let's configure our vit. So we need to open vit.config.js that we just created and paste the following code. It's the same code here. It's kind of hard to see because I've zoomed in quite a bit, but it's the same code here that I'm pasting. Save it and close this. Next, we need to go into the index.html and copy some HTML5. So I'm going to paste this in here. Save it. Um, that's absolutely fine. Now we need an MPA script to run write. Okay. 
So under package.json, here we have our scripts and essentially we just need a start script in this case because we've already got the test script. So I'm going to copy this, make sure that you have the comma at the bot at the end and paste it inside here. Save this one as well. And finally, we can start with by doing npm start. Awesome. So we're essentially using this to start with and we should get this result, hopefully. Let's open the terminal inside here. So terminal and then new terminal. It's kind of hard to see. And I'm just going to paste npm start. Here we go, npm start. It looks a bit odd, but that's npm start. And now this creates a local host for us, which we can visit, hopefully. If you hold control and press on it, this will open local host of 8080. And here we go, we have our project working, which is great. If I was to go to the index.html file and change to hello123, save it, it automatically refreshes the browser, which is amazing and it is super fast. Brilliant. Now let's have a look at, at the rest of the stuff. We need to also import Bootstrap. So this is going to go inside the scss style.scss. Copy this and this is going to be in here, here, and we paste it. Save. Okay. Next, we need to load the CSS and import Bootstrap JavaScript. Okay. So this is going to be inside main.js. It's here. And we paste. Okay. Brilliant. And then the last thing, you can also import JavaScript plugins individually. Yep. You can also import them individually if you wish to. But here in this example, I'm going to import absolutely everything. And I give you an example as well. Awesome. And you're done. So now, if I save this and if I go back, you'll see that the button has come up and all Bootstrap application is fully working, which is amazing. If I was to scale this down and just so we can see a little bit better, super hard. Inside here, you can see your terminal that everything is going well. I'm going to try to minimize this without closing. Obviously, that needs to run in the background and now we can mess around with it. Just test it. Yep, everything seems to be working. Now let's close everything and let's focus on the styles.scss. Now the reason that I'm showing you this way is because if you install Bootstrap locally, now you can customize pretty much anything that you want. Let me show you what I mean. For example, whatever you pick from Bootstrap, you can go and customize. Let's pick the typography, for example. So early in this tutorial, we looked at the typography and let's have a look when you scroll down here we go we have the display headings here and just underneath them we have variables.scss so essentially we can overwrite anything that we want and modify the bootstrap the way we want if you find anything that you want to modify from components you can go to them let's say alerts and then somewhere at the bottom you will find the variables that you can modify so these variables let me show you a few examples variables are usually modified above bootstrap so for example if i wanted to change the background color there is a variable for that so it would be body dash bg and then you can put your color let's say we wanted to make it black and just like that if you save this will compile and then change the background to black you can also change all of the colors such as the primary secondary uh, danger and so on for example let's say primary the primary color as default is this blue color here. So let's say we want to change it to an orangey color. I don't know, FF4136, like that, and save. And now, in a second, yep, when it compiled, then as you can see, it changes the primary color to this orangey color. And let me zoom in. Just like that, you can go to the topography and change the font size as well. So I believe that this is an H1. Let me check it out. So we have an H1 in here. Let's create an H2 just for this example. Save it. So we have two fonts here. And maybe we can give it a class name of text white if you wish to. And we can do this with the other one. Now let's go back and let's see whether we can modify them. So for the font, you have H1 and then font size. These are all these variables are listed under topography. You can find them there. And now I can literally put seven RAM or whatever size you want. And this should change. It takes a second for me, but here we go. It changed and it's looking good. I can do the same for H2 and maybe set, put this to six RAM. And now this should change as well. 
just like so. So you can modify pretty much anything that you like. And just to give you an example of something else, let's say you want to change, let's say you want to modify a card. Let's copy this card super quickly. Or instead, you can use your bootstrap extension here. So somewhere around here, I can just say BS dash card. And then I'm not really sure which one I want. Really, I really don't know which one it is. Maybe card background. Let's have a look at this one. Okay, so we're getting a card with a background here. Obviously, I don't have an image. Maybe I can insert one super quickly inside source, IMG. And then if I open this, I will paste an image of a cat.jpg. Okay, so now if I was to change the image here, let me do a view, world wrap, and here we go. We can do img cat.jpg. Would this work? Here we go. Yeah, the cat works, which is great. And now, obviously, this card has a primary background color, which we've changed in the SCSS here. But what I wanted to show you is that underneath each component, if you scroll down, I mean, in this case, you're going to have to scroll down quite a bit. Let's go to the bottom. And underneath here, you will see all of the variables that you can change. And for example, you can change the spacer, X spacer, Y title, spacing, you can change the title color and so on. So let's say that I wanted to change the card title color to be something else. I'm going to copy this, go back. And just like the previous variables, I'm going to copy this. And from here, we can paste the variable and change the color to literally whatever we like. Uh, maybe we can just put blue for now and save. This will take a second. And as you can see, we have officially changed the card title to the color blue. And this card can be reused through the entire website and it will have the same styling. And before we finish with this video, I just wanted to show you that the JavaScript also works. We have inserted the JavaScript in here. But what I was going to show you is that if I put something that requires JavaScript, for example, bootstrap model toggle that will require JavaScript. If I save this one, and then if I click on it, you will see that the model works. Obviously, it looks a little bit ugly because I messed up all the colors in here. Let me comment them out. And now it's going to look a little bit better. Here we go. Everything is back to default and the model is working. That's going to be pretty much everything from this tutorial. I hope that you found it useful. If you found this video useful, like this video, consider subscribing to my channel. And as always, thank you very much for watching.